my biology. This is Miss Satterley. I'm going to go over a couple things about DNA and RNA to kind of introduce these topics. So DNA and RNA are both types of nucleic acids. And the DNA actually stands for what it's named after um, or what the name is. So DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. RNA is very similar, except instead of deoxy, it's just ribonucleic acid. And both of these structures are similar. Uh, they're both nucleic acids, but we're going to look at their differences today. So the sugar. DNA and RNA are actually named after the sugar that's found in them. DNA sugar is called deoxyribose. And RNA sugar is just ribose. Strands. Now, strands has to do with the number of strands. DNA actually has two strands, and we refer to it as a double helix. Now, RNA is only one strand, so it is a single helix. Bases. Nitrogen bases are found in DNA. There's adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, and also uracil. Now, three of these bases are found in both DNA and RNA, which I'll talk about on uh, my next paper here. But the three that are found in both are adenine, guanine, and cytosine. Now, DNA has a base that's unique to it called thymine, which would be T. And then RNA has uracil, which is a U. Now the functions of these, the whole purpose of DNA, it stores hereditary information. So we already talked about genetics, genes, traits, all of that's stored in DNA. Now, the purpose of RNA is the production of proteins. So it's actually going to store the directions on how to make certain proteins within your body. Now, down at the bottom of drawing, I'm just going to show you the difference between the two. So again, DNA is a double helix. So it looks something like this. And then RNA is a single helix. So it actually has just one side and then the nucleic acids hang off of the side like that. Well, the next thing I want to talk about are the four bases found in DNA. So over here I have two and two, three, and then primidine and purine. The way to remember this is A actually bonds with T and there's two hydrogen bonds. And the way I remember it is T, 2 starts with T. Now, even though 3 also starts with 3, G or C and G both rhyme with 3. And that's how I tell the difference. So adenine, I'm going to have 2. Guanine is 3 bonds. Thymine is 2. And cytosine is 3. Now, over here, we have primidine and purine. This has to do with the structure of the nucleic acids. So a primidine is actually going to be a single ring like this. And a purine is a nucleic acid that has a double ring structure. So adenine and guanine are both purines while thymine and cytosine are both primidines. And on my next paper, we'll look at that in a little more detail. So down at the bottom, DNA is split up into complementary base pairs. And I'm going to show you how we would take a strand of DNA and replicate it through DNA replication. This is very simple. So up here, I have my base pair. So A and T goes together and G and C goes together. So if I have a, a G here, I'm going to write C. This would be G. A goes with T. C goes with G. T goes with A. T, C, C, G. T, A, 
G and C. So this is a complementary base pair. I have copied my strand of DNA. Now you can see it's not identical, but it is a complementary to it. So I could take the strand of DNA and copy a new strand and have the complementary base pair. So I'm going to keep following this pattern. And that is how you do the DNA replication on paper following those base pairs. DNA and RNA are made up of nucleotides. Nucleotides are structures. This is a schematic of one or a diagram. This right here, this is actually a five carbon sugar now, depending on what nucleic acid we're talking about, this would either be deoxyribose or ribose. Well, I just drew something that looked like that. So this is my nitrogen base. And this last thing is called a phosphate group. Now, the phosphate group and your five carbon sugar make up the backbone of DNA. So what I mean by that is if I draw my helix here, in the middle, the rungs on the ladder, those are the nitrogen bases. But the outside string or pathway, that's a phosphate group and carbon uh, sugar. Now down here, we're going to look at uh, a piece of DNA, and we're going to classify these as either adenine, guanine, thymine, or cytosine based on their shape and the number of bonds. Well, on my last paper, I remember, okay, A goes with T, and it has two bonds, and G goes with C, three bonds. Okay, so I know here's three hydrogen bonds, which means B and D are either going to, they're going to have to be G or C, and this is two bonds, so this is A and T. Well, which one is which? So what I need to do is I need to look at the number of circles that we have here. So this is a single, which means A is a pyrimidine. I'm going to fill this in. C would be a purine. B is also a purine. And then D would be a pyrimidine. So based on whether it is a double or single and the number of bonds, I can tell you which one is which. Well, I know that adenine and guanine are both purines, which means this has to be A and this one has to be G. So my C is adenine and B would be guanine. A goes with T, so A is thymine, and G goes with C, which means D would be cytosine. So that is how you can determine which amino acid you have just based on a picture showing you the rings and the number of bonds. So next I want to talk about DNA replication. So we demonstrated DNA replication with A's with T's and G's with C's and so forth, but how replication actually works. Replication occurs in three steps. Step one is unzipping, which means the hydrogen bonds are broken. And during step one, we actually are going to use an enzyme called DNA helicase. During step two, after you have the two strands broken, you're going to start adding complementary base pairs. And there's another enzyme that is involved in that, and that is called DNA polymerase. Now the last one, step three, you end up with two strands of DNA, but they have to be put back together, and that is done by an enzyme called DNA ligase. I do want to point out, on my strands of DNA at the end, since my original DNA was split into two. 
my two copies are going to have one of my original strands and one new strand. So one original and one new strand and my two DNA strands at the end. So that was just a, a quick look at DNA replication. Now I want to go ahead and talk about the enzymes involved in DNA replication. So DNA helicase, the whole purpose of this is going to unzip the DNA strand. And how it does this is it actually breaks the hydrogen bonds. And DNA helicase is involved in step one of, of DNA replication. DNA ligase is going to actually put the strand back together. And how it does this is it's going to reform those hydrogen bonds or H2 bonds. It's going to reform them. I messed up there a little. And that happens in stage three. Now stage two, in order, this is where the copying actually happens. This is where DNA polymerase is going to add complementary nucleotides, which means that if it sees an A, it's going to add a T. And that is how DNA polymerase works. So this is just a, a short rundown on DNA replication. Now I want to talk about transcription. So transcription is the next thing that happens. So I have my bases up here. Actually, this should say five because I have my two separate ones. So just a reminder from what I said earlier, thymine is found in DNA and uracil is the counterpart in RNA. Since thymine is a primidine, uracil is also a primidine. So I'm going to do some transcription practice. Now transcription is when I take my strand of DNA and I'm going to create an mRNA strand. I do it the same way I did the complementary DNA bases, except now instead of going A to T, I'm going A to U instead. But my G's and C's cha don't change. So A is going to go with U. This is a G, A, U, C, C, G. U, A, G, and C. So that is all there is to transcription. I'm going to go ahead and do the other two strands. Now, one thing you could do is you can pause the video. You can look at the setup here and write it down on your by yourself and then see if you do it correctly. U, A, A, U, G, U, A, C, U, and G. So that is transcription when we're writing transcription. Now the whole process of transcription, I will talk about, I'll have a PowerPoint later, but I just wanted to do uh, this first. So that is transcription. Now I want you to enter, I want to introduce you to what's called the genetic code. So this is a set of 64 codons. So what a codon is, a codon is a three letter set of mRNA. That's what all of these letter sets are. So AUA, AGG, UUU, CUU, all of those are codons. Now all of the codons are going to correspond to a different amino acid. Now amino acids are the building blocks of proteins and there are 20 different amino acids and all of these amino acids correspond to different codons. So how you read this is in this first box, so FHE goes with either UUU or UUC. Now, if you have UUA or UUG, it's actually leucine or LEU. Serine goes with all four. Proline goes with all four. Leucine, all four. And if they're split up, it means those two go with that one. Those two go with that one. Now you're going to notice I have three different stop codons. Stop codons are actually going to tell the cell to stop replicating or stop making proteins. And we'll talk about that in more detail later on. I'm just showing you how to read the genetic code and how to do kind of the paper 
uh, questions behind transcription and translation before we talk about the specific processes. So my three-step codons are UAA, UAG, and UGA. So when you run into those codons, that is when translation would stop. You would not write anymore. Now over here, AUG, this is actually the start codon is uh, methanine. I think I said that right. So this is the start codon. And this will come into play on the, our uh, homework assignment that I'll have with this that I will post when I get the digital version done with it. If you were absent today and you're here tomorrow, I'll give you the paper version. If you're remote, then I will have the uh, digital version for you. So again, this is the genetic code. And how you read this is you start your first letter. First letter is a U. Then I look for my second letter, say it's an A. I go here and then I look at my four options. We're gonna practice with translation now. So translation, what I want you to do at home is uh, if you have a copier or printer, I mean, then I want you to copy this right here. And I want you to practice writing these. So when you do the assignment, you need to have a copy of this. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of these. So we can see the whole thing here. So AUG. So how I'm going to do this is my first letter is A. My second letter is U. So here it is right here, AUG. What I would write in my blank would be MET. So this is actually my start codon. GGA. That's a G. G A is right here, which would be glycine. Next one, C, G, U, which is right here, arginine. A, U, U, A is my first letter, U, right here, isoleucine. This is actually a capital I, a lowercase l, and then E. C, 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 right here, that's proline. And then GGG is right here again, which is also glycine. So this is how you use your genetic code based on the different codons that you have. I'll do one more column. We'll do this one again. If you wanna pause it, try it yourself, and then see how you did. Please do that. So AUC, AUC is isoleucine, AGU, serine, CAU, histine, UUU is here, GCG, so GCG. And then U, C, A. So that's how you use the genetic code to figure out what amino acids go with each codon. Now the last thing I want to do is this right here. We're going to do all of the things we just did and mix them all together in one activity here. Okay, so here is my mRNA segment at the top. So the first thing I want to do is actually I want to split this up into codons like this. The first question here is I actually need to determine which amino acids go with each one. So UCU, that would be UCU, serine. CGU, okay. G A A U U U and U C C. So I would use my genetic code to complete that part. 
Now the next part is to determine the anticodon for each tRNA molecule that will bind to this mRNA segment. tRNA is complementary to mRNA. So complementary means you, you do A with U or G with C. So I'm going to use this top mRNA segment. So U is going to go with A, C, G, U, A, G, C, a, C, U, U, A, 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 G, G. That's how you do number two. Now, number three, it says determine the sequence of nucleotides in the segment of DNA from which the mRNA strand is transcribed, which means I'm working backwards. So, U is going to be A still. And if you notice, my anticodon, my tRNA, and my DR DNA are going to be very similar. There's only going to be one difference. Instead of U's, I'm going to see T's because DNA does not have uracil and RNA does not have thymine. But that's how you do that one. Now, the very last problem says, determine the sequence of nucleotides in the segment of DNA that's complementary to the DNA from number three. So I'm going to do my complementary base pairs. Remember, A goes with T, G goes with C. So A to T, C, T, C, G, T, G, A, A, T, 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 C, C. And that is how you code for DNA, mRNA, and how you use the genetic code to determine your amino acids. Okay, uh, if you have any questions on this, please let me know. Have a wonderful day. Bye.